Hi everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to tie-dye t-shirts in a chemistry classroom setting. This works also for very large groups or parties. You can even shrink this down and just do it by yourself at home if you want to. So let me go ahead and show you what it's all about. The very first thing you need to do is buy your shirt. It needs to be 100% cotton or at least as close to it as you possibly can. Um, you're gonna soak your shirt overnight, okay? And sodium carbonate, the pH of that is gonna be around a 10.6 pH. Um, and you're gonna need to know that for later if you're doing the science behind tie-dye shirts. What this does is it just helps the um, dyes absorb into the fibers of your shirt. So this definitely needs to be soaked overnight. Um, you can buy this on Amazon. I'm going to put the link in the description below for everything you guys need here today if you want to go ahead and order it. Um, and yes, that is a base. So next, you're going to need to mix all of your colors up. Let me show you what this looks like here in just a second. But what you're going to need to do is get some kind of really big jar. Um, you can just recycle. You guys just get a big jar. Uh, make sure it's nice and clean on the inside. And then you are going to put your water your dye powder, and something called urea, okay? It's a chemical, and again, I'll put it in the link below, um, and you can see how much of each one you need based off of how much dye you wanna make of that particular color. And you can make as many colors as you want, um, and you just stir it up together, and voila. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so we've added our urea to the bottom. That's the white flakes that you see and our red color that we're gonna make into this big jar. Go ahead and fill it up with just plain old tap water um, all the way to the top, and then you can stir it with whatever you have. I just use an old ruler, which is completely acceptable. Make sure there's no chunks and that it is all completely dissolved and you are good to go. All right, so when you're done with that, you're gonna go ahead, use a funnel, and then put all of the colors that you mixed in these squirt bottles. Now you guys, this is a one-time expense. You can use all of these things every single year. Just make sure you wash them out really good and then store them away. Um, we did make quite a few colors for our chemistry team, and this was for the entire team. So I know this looks like a lot, but it gave a lot of students the opportunity to make these tie-dye shirts. All right, so now that you have all your dyes ready to go, you need to prepare your dye station. And I'm gonna show you what mine looks like, but I just want you to take a little caution, recognize that somebody's probably gonna drip a little bit on the floor, so put something down if you need to, or even cover up the table you're working on, depending on you know what it's made out of and everything like that. Um, and then you're gonna take the shirts that you soaked overnight and wring them out. They're still gonna be damp and that's perfectly fine. Um, and then you're going to fold them into whatever pattern you want and rubber band them. Now there are pretty much endless amounts of designs out there you guys you can do for tie-dye shirts. I'm just gonna show you a couple of them that I made, but let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so we went ahead and set up one room with just these tablecloths from the dollar store you guys and we taped them to the floor so students could fold their tie-dye shirts here because they are going to be wet still and we threw the rubber bands in the middle so they can go ahead and rubber band them up the next room is for dyeing so we went ahead and got the dollar store throwaway bins the cookie sheet on top so all the ink could go through it and we're good to go so here's how you fold a shirt. And like I said, there's so many different ways out there. I'm just gonna show you three different ways that I did. This one is just kind of like the accordion style where you go back and forth and then um, like horizontally and then vertically. And it kind of ends up making these boxes in the end. Um, and you can use as many colors as you want on any of these, you guys. So just know that, be creative with this. It is pretty fun. This one is like the cheater way where you just kind of scrunch it all together and you put some rubber bands. So if you have someone who isn't really into all of the patterns per se, go ahead and do this. It gives you a splotchy finish and it's pretty cool to look at. And then the last one I did was the typical spiral or the classic spiral. You just pinch it in the middle and then uh, move it in one direction and go ahead and rubber band that all up. And you typically um, dye this one in like a pie shape fashion in order to get that really pretty vibrant spiral when you're done. All right, you guys, it's time for the fun part, dyeing your shirt. Couple things to think about. 
When you're looking at the color wheel, never put colors on opposite ends together and like touching on your shirt. It's gonna make a muddy mess. So what I mean by that is don't combine things like red and green together, okay? You wanna try to combine colors on your shirt or put them next to one another that are next to each other on the color wheel. So for example, red next to orange next to yellow are gonna work out beautifully. So what we did when we did this in the classroom is at each station, we would put colors that are next to each other on the color wheels at that station so that our students wouldn't accidentally grab red and green at the same time kind of deal, right? Um, so let me show you what that looks like. All right, so go ahead and notice the setup here. The shirt is sitting on the um, cookie cooling tray so that all of the ink can just slide down. It's metal, you can wash it, you can use it again next year. And the tray underneath is just a dollar store tray. We can throw it away when we're done. Or you can go ahead and wash it out and use it again. That's no big deal. Um, and you can see we are just squirting that ink all over the top. This one is the spiral. It is in a pie shape manner. And you need to make sure that you always flip it over and do the other side. Now, if you don't want a whole lot of color, um, then you can put less. If you want your shirt not to have any white, you really need to get the nozzle straight down into the folds of the shirt and make sure you squeeze them in the middle. Uh, when you unravel this, you will see some white if you don't do that. Here is the shirt that we just crinkled up together. I'm just gonna use two colors on this one. So I'm gonna use purple and this bluish turquoise color. Um, it's gonna come out really, really pretty, guys. I can't wait to show you the reveal. But notice I am wearing gloves. This does stain your hands. Be cautious of that. Have your students wear gloves as well. You all will be thinking me when you don't have stained fingers in the end. Okay, so once you are done dyeing your shirt, you're gonna wanna wrap it in some paper. We just use butcher paper, and then you're gonna stick it inside a Ziploc bag, make sure it's nice and sealed up, and you're gonna leave it there for a day before you do any washing. And I'm gonna tell you how to wash it in just a second. But I wanted to share with you the science of the tie-dye because this is an acid and base neutralization reaction. So we've already said that sodium carbonate that we soaked our shirts in was a base. Remember, it was about a 10.6 pH. Now, when the cellulose that is going on in the cotton t-shirt mixes or combines with those color dyes, it will actually create hydrochloric acid, which is HCl. You guys, HCl is what's going on inside our stomachs. That is the same thing as our stomach acid. So it's a very strong acid. When we combine these two together, the sodium carbonate from what we soaked our shirts in and the hydrochloric acid, that is mixing an acid and a base together. So it will neutralize. When we get a neutralization reaction occurring, it will always result in salt and water. Um, this means that we will end up with a pH of seven and our shirts will not be um, irritating our skin. It won't be itchy to the touch, nothing like that. It'll be perfectly safe for us to wear and handle which is awesome. Now, when you wanna do your big reveal, you guys, um, I'm gonna show you how that looks in just one second, but I wanna make sure you all know what to do. When you take it out, you need to rinse your shirt really, really well until the water runs clear before you stick it in the washer. Don't just go straight to the washer. It has a bunch of dyes still on it and you need to get that off before you go damaging all of your clothes. Let me show you guys what this looks like. All right, you guys. Put on those gloves because this will still stain your hands. Get a trash bag handy. Go ahead and take your shirt out of the Ziploc bag. Unwrap the paper and take off every single one of those rubber bands. Now go ahead and just with some plain water, start rinsing it out. And this is going to take a while. I've sped up this camera quite a bit. Um, but you need to go ahead and rinse them until the water runs clear from the shirt. Then and only then is it safe to go ahead and put it in the wash um, with just some mild detergent so that you can get it fully clean before you wear it. Let me show you what they look like when they're dry. 
Okay, didn't they come out so vibrant and colorful? I absolutely love them. I'm happy with each and every one of them. You all should have seen all of the beautiful shirts that came from the chemistry students. I was so proud of each and every one of them. You all can make this happen in your school or even at your next party that you wanna do. Um, remember, all of the items that we looked at today are in the um, description below. The Amazon links are there for you all. If you liked this video or if it was helpful, will you please go ahead and click that subscribe button and support my channel. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, everybody.